FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today's November 6th, 2017. And hey, be part of the fun. Be part of the show. Join us. Send us an email, kl at kerrylutz.com. Don't forget the Twitter feeds at Kerry Lutz. So uh, Dr. Gerard Lamero is with us now, author, philosopher, economist, engineer, and Gerard, a lot of things happening in the political area. We got the dossier gate. We've got Donna Brazil gate. We've got everything happening here. You name it, uh, Uranium One. So question for you as we start this show is, is it all going to come to anything? What's going to happen next? And Gerard, as always, thanks for coming on the show. Oh, I love being on your show. You have a great show. In terms of what's happening next, well, there are a bunch of things happening. A lot of things. There are a lot of moving parts. Some of them are moving in parallel. Some of them moving uh, in various directions that are not parallel. But there are a lot of things going on. So I think you're going to have to narrow it down, pick one of the topics, and tell me if you'd like a readout on okay. that. Because to tell you everything's going on, we'll take the rest of your show. All right. Let's just start <laughs> out with Donna Brazil's book. Um which basically blockbuster. yeah blockbuster which says that the the nomination for democrat president in 2016 was fixed from the get go which if you'd been watching wikileaks you would have known that already anyway i'll tell you my theory on this first she says that they screwed bernie bernie uh, maybe could have won the nomination and that uh, but because they had entered into an agreement, the Democratic Party, with Hillary Clinton, that she basically was running the show before the first bullet was fired in the first primary, she was able to steal the nomination or at least rig it in her favor. So if he did have a chance, she had it. Now, I'll just tell you, like, my experience with politics in little town in New York State in Westchester County. And the Democrats and the Republicans would often cross-endorse each other's candidates and thereby assure that the favored parties came in. Somebody sued them one time because they didn't do it properly. He won, and that was kind of the end of that arrangement. So what they would do is every other year, there'd be an election for the town council, and they would each pick a strong candidate. The Republicans would put up a strong one, Democrats a strong one, and then they would each put up a weak candidate, a sacrificial lamb, if you will. And so what that assured was that uh, they would basically split the vote and they'd each get their person in. And then depending who won for the supervisor, that because there's four members on the board plus the supervisor, that would determine who ran the town, which party. Now, that worked great until they nominated the Republicans, the sacrificial lamb, but she didn't know that she was supposed to lose the election. And she actually ran an aggressive campaign that I helped message for her, pretty much telling the town officials, you're not entitled to lifetime health benefits for free or a taxpayer expense because uh, they aren't free. They cost the taxpayers. And she was indignant about it. And she won like in a landslide. And, you know, it's one thing for the Democrats to hate her because she had upset the apple cart, but the Republicans despised her too. The people on the committee did nothing except work to undermine her through out her term. And this is the exact same thing with Bernie. He was a sacrificial lamb who was put up there to basically lose, but to focus the nomination on Hillary and not Hillary against Trump because she couldn't answer Trump's charges of corruption and everything else. And then Bernie got, got it into his head that, you know, I'm getting enough votes here. I might actually win this thing. And that's what happened. But everybody knew this thing, Gerard, was fixed from the get-go. It wasn't supposed to be anything else. Right. Well, you know... <clears throat> It goes back to a lot of things that have happened in the Obama administration that actually wound up hurting the Democratic Party uh, substantially. And the Democratic Party was basically uh, 
in a bad place financially. Obama didn't care. He kept his own fundraising to himself. <clears throat> he wasn't sharing it with the Democratic Party. They got in such a bad situation, they signed an agreement with the Hillary for America campaign that basically uh, got her to bail out some of uh, the DNC's debts and to get fundraising uh, directed uh, toward their bank accounts. And so you, you had this, this takeover early of the Democratic National Committee, which is not supposed to happen. The DNC or the RNC, for that matter, are supposed to be neutral until a candidate selected. And then, of course, usually the presidential nominee has, uh, is deferred to and, uh, and picks the appropriate uh, chairman of their party. Mm -hmm. Well, we had a situation totally different. We had the worst campaigner in my lifetime, and I've watched <laughs> presidential elections for years and years and years, but she was the worst candidate. She also, uh, don't forget, had health issues. And Donna Brazil mentions in her book the fact that she was ready to replace Hillary Clinton with Joe Biden after the episode, the 9-11 memorial episode, which she collapsed in people's arms yeah. and, and would have uh, hit her head uh, on the van that she was getting into or else on the ground. But they managed to hold her up long enough. And she was a, a, a sort of a time bomb, ticking time bomb politically, because you never knew if she'd make it through an event without collapsing or having some sort of uh, medical attack. And no one quite knew the extent of her medical situation. I don't think they still do today. But it was obvious she was not a healthy candidate. Candidate. She had to sit no. home a lot of the time. And so at any rate, Donna Brazil just came out with what appears to be her side of the story. And I might add in an uh, interview today, um, you know, uh, we, we hear that uh, maybe she's backtracking, backpedaling a bit, you know, with the idea that, uh, oh, she really meant Hillary's good and uh, wondering who got to her. Uh, given this book, which is the exact opposite, it was an anti-Hillary book. If, uh, I can't see how you can read it in a positive light. And now she's saying, well, she just had Hillary's best interest in mind. Oh, always, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's all kind of uh, entertaining at this point, isn't it? Especially after Hillary just had her book and it was everyone's fault but hers uh, why she lost. But you know, the whole thing was a setup from the beginning. Right when Bernie said, uh, enough of the damn email server, I don't want to hear any more about it. You know, from that point on, any thinking person should have realized the whole thing was fixed. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll tell you this, I believe if it weren't fixed, for example, if the superdelegates weren't weighted the way they were weighted, designed in a sense to bless uh, the choice of the DNC for the mm. candidate, I, I think... Um, you know, with my forecasting in that, that Bernie Sanders actually would have gotten a nomination. I think it was taken from him. And uh, incidentally, from a legal point of view, that may be one of her biggest liabilities, because rigging a uh, primary uh, campaign for president could very well be, and I'm not an election lawyer, which is a real specialty, but it might actually be criminal. And that may be something that's going to be hard for her to play down, given the fact we have this expose and who knows who's going going to be the next one. I predicted in my recent article uh, last week about the fact that uh, there were probably going to be a series of bombshells uh, that were going to happen uh, starting in late October, going into November, that uh, would shake up uh, the parties further. And I referred uh, last week to Black Monday week that uh, there would be several things happen. And probably the first one that hurt Hillary was the Donna Brazil book. Uh, and that is certainly a blockbuster. And we're only just touching the surface of some of the things that were in there. Yeah. Oh, there was a lot of stuff in there. And the book hasn't even come out yet. That's going to be the most uh, eagerly awaited book of the year, I think, don't you? <laughs> More so than yeah, Hillary's. Well, you know, uh, this Seth Rich, remember... Uh, she dedicated the book to him, yeah. Seth Rich was the young man who was mysteriously shot, supposedly uh, for purposes of robbery, but his wallet was still intact and that, on his way home. Uh, and and uh, a lot of people believe he was the source of the email leaks from the DNC, the DNC email mm -hmm. leaks. Right. Uh, this has nothing to do with the Not Hillary Clinton server leaks and that and, and or the Wiener 
<laughs> yeah. email fiasco. Uh, yeah. Well, he just uh, went to anyway, jail last week. Some people week. think he was killed, and Donna Brazil says in her book something to the effect, and I'm not quoting her exactly, that uh, she feared for her safety and yeah. uh, closed her drapes at night, apparently worrying that a sniper would take her out. Now, why would somebody fear for that? And she uh, dedicated the book to him. The book is dedicated so, to Seth Rich. That says something about what's been going on, I think, in the Democratic Party. Yeah, if well, people are afraid for their safety. Well, you know, Gerard, uh, politics is a contact sport. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so I think there are a number of things in that book that uh, really mm. um, aren't that positive for the Clintons. And uh, that's just uh, the tip of the iceberg, because there are a lot of other things coming. We have the courts, uh, you know, allowing the, um, <clears throat> uh, which was it, the, well, the, uh, the DOJ has permitted the informant who is working yes. on the Russian bribery uh, plot Iranian to one. testify before Congress. Correct. And that appears to look like 135 or $145 million went to the Clinton Foundation in a quid pro quo for Hillary's decision to approve uh, the 20% uranium reserve uh, sale to Russia, uh, to a Russian arm. And uh, at the same time, also... Uh, it, it happened. Um, Bill Clinton got his largest fee ever in yeah. Russia, $500,000, to speaking to a bank that was involved in the deal. Correct. So, yeah, <laughs> not uh, good times to be a Clinton, I guess, huh? Well, you know, you do enough things wrong and you have the chutzpah, you know, the nerve to think you're always going to get away with it. Sometime you may slip and the whole house of cards is going to fall down. I think it's possible it's starting to fall now. Well, I've learned to uh, never expect justice for the Clintons. As long as you don't expect justice, you won't be disappointed when it doesn't happen because it's never happened yet. And, you know, there's a great uh, era or a great uh, error in logic. And that is because it hasn't happened. It won't happen. <laughs> That's something you study in logic, and uh, it certainly can happen. And whether it happens in this case, I don't know. Uh, I'm sort of a great believer that the truth is like water. You can't keep it at an unnatural level. And maybe you can lie for time and get away with it. But I think sooner or later, the water reaches its proper level, and truth also reaches its proper level. And I think that without them in power, without the Obama administration to protect the Clintons, I think there's a good chance somebody's going to spill the beans. I think the informant for that uh, particular Russian bribery deal could be big. We've also got the Federal Election Commission complaint that was put in by a nonprofit organization that uh, how come the DNC and the Clinton campaign uh, funneled money through legal services uh, to dig up that Trump dossier. That's another uh, potential violation of election laws. Uh, no. you, you can't fake that. Anytime you spend more than $200 on an election campaign expense, you have to document it with who got the money, what was the date, what's the amount, what's the purpose, that kind of information. And here we have, you know, almost 10, depending on which estimate you use, up to $12 million paid to Perkins Coy, the Democrat-related law firm that then uh, purchased the services of Fusion GPS, one of those op research folks who may have gone further than op research into a smear it's campaign. It's like op creation. Chris Steele. That was op creation. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, uh, op, yeah, exactly. I think they've done worse in the past, the Clintons. They've never been brought to account. And no. I don't think that Trump really wanted to go after her, but I think the fact that they've given him no harbor no rest from the harassment of the party, the Democratic Party, since he was elected, since before he was elected, I think he said enough. And I think a lot of this, I don't believe they're coincidences, Gerard. They've been planned this way. There's a, a plan at work here, and they've been executed flawlessly. And now the chips are going to fall where they may. So maybe, maybe there will be justice for the Clintons. I'm just not holding out any great hope for it. 
think most people I talk to around the country are not holding out a hope of that happening. But I'm actually a believer in sort of like the trajectory of things. You know, I look at long term trends that are like 24 to 36 years long. I look at shorter term trends that are about eight to 24 years long. And I look at what I call dynamic um, dynamic events that are within a year time frame trends. And I just think that things are moving against the Clintons. And I, I have a feeling that, that I, I think it may take even past uh, 2020, I think another election of Trump. But I think before two terms of Donald Trump, uh, I think Hillary's going to be brought to justice. Well, from your mouth to God's ears, I'll believe it when I see it. Thus far, it's not happened, but doesn't mean it can't happen. I just think it's highly unlikely. But then again, Trump is the outsider, and they've been messing with him since he stepped into office. So maybe he's this will be their comeuppance. Yeah, he's a fighter. Remember, he's a queen from Queens, New York, and I know what it's like mm-hmm. to live in New York because I lived in New York City itself for a while. And I know my dad was attacked on a New York City subway. He was um, on a New York City subway. Somebody got, came up to him with a knife and said, give me your wallet. And my dad, being a tough New Yorker, you know how he responded. He grabbed the guy's arm uh, that had the knife in it. He turned it around and broke it. Never gave up his wallet, though. He's nice. a fighter. Nice. Well, yeah, I mean, I spent most of my life in that fair state, so... What you're telling me is no secret, but, you know, uh, hey, we're just going to have to see. Certainly, he has uh, been up for the fight thus far, and things seem to be breaking his way. Uh, We'll see about North Korea, what happens there, and, and all the other things that are going on that we barely scratch the surface here, Gerard. So people want to find out more about you. You got a new book coming out uh, in the not too distant future. Where do we go? Well, uh, always you can go to Great News for America. That's F O R, not the number. So, greatnewsforamerica.com. My book on the 2016 election, before the election happened, was I told you it'd be a historic election. And I made 10 predictions. Nine of them came true. One of them, some people call it true. It wasn't good enough for me to call it true. Which one was and that? And now the new, the new book is More Great News for America. And uh, that one is supposed to be out in January, if all goes well. And it's going to be all about the 2018 elections, the congressional elections and my predictions for them. And also about my predictions for politics in the U.S. in 2019. So it's a look ahead by two years, and it'll probably uh, precede the third uh, of the trilogy, which will be about the 2020 election that I want to have come out mm-hmm. in January 2020. Hey, so which which prediction didn't come true? Uh, I thought that Trump would win by a slightly bigger margin. My electoral college forecast was almost exactly right. Every state that he he captured, I had predicted he would capture. So I not only did an overall who's going to win kind of thing, but I I did a specific electoral college forecast because it's really 51 different elections. You got to carry each state separately. You know, it's not what the popular vote is. It's the electoral college. So I almost had the electoral college right on. And by the way, I predicted he carried New Hampshire. They gave it to Hillary by a thousand votes. And since that time, they've found 6,000 suspicious votes that they think people from Massachusetts uh, went over there Mm -hmm. and voted and then left and never really registered permanently. So I think I was right that he uh, carried New Hampshire, even though he didn't get credit for it. Mm -hmm. Well, the only one I didn't see coming was Pennsylvania, but I pretty much got all the others. I predicted that one. I saw I got uh, Michigan and I got Wisconsin, but and, and Iowa and Ohio and Florida. I, there was absolutely never a question in my mind that he was going to win Florida, but I just didn't I agree, see Pennsylvania I agree with you on that one. Yeah, Pennsylvania, I didn't see coming. So I thought Pennsylvania would be close, but I had him winning, and he did. Yeah, well, he got me there. So, anyways, but you know, we both uh, agreed that he was going to win, much to everyone's surprise. And he's now president. Well, anyway, take a look at Gerard's site. And Gerard, it's good to have you on. Hey, any questions or comments? We welcome. Love for you to be involved in the show. 
Just email kl at carrylutz.com, Twitter feed at carrylutz, and Facebook page is Financial Survival Network. Oh, one other thing. Been having trouble with iTunes downloads due to an RSS feed pro problem. That's been fixed. If it's not downloading now, just either refresh the feed or unsubscribe and then resubscribe and it'll work fine for you. If you're not getting it on iTunes and you want to, download, go to iTunes.com, download the program, PC or Mac, and then just go into the store, type in Kerry Lutz, search it, comes up, you click subscribe, and the shows automatically get delivered to your computer. You don't have to look for them every day or when they're released, they'll be there and you can listen to them on your phone or wherever. You can also do that, of course, on your on your a smartphone, all you got to do is use the podcast app on iPhone or the, uh, what is it called? Google Play on Android and you'll get it. And Gerard, thanks so much. We'll talk to you again real soon. Be well, my friend. I look forward to talking again. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.